he be open by now? It's almost 6.30. Oh, you know Mac. He probably overslept again. Man, I'm starving. Look, let's try the cafe down on Bigelow Street. I heard the owner's an insomniac. All yours, my man. Trust me, my grandfather was one of the great philatelists of all time. Nice for our side. of the house. Feast your eyes on this. So what about these? It's the 1942 Mauritania airmail inverted block. How much are they worth? More than all the rest put together. About 17,000 for the four of them. Why don't we forget about breakfast? Are you kidding? You should hear my stomach. Look, Trimax Place, one more time. It's got to be open by now. Hey, let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the matter? Those blinds were closed before. Get a hunch. Around the back. at M. Rubin's Stamp and Coin Shop. Suspect headed north at Sentinel. Request backup, over. Ludlow 4, backup Ludlow 9 are in pursuit of possible 459 headed north on Sentinel, over. Ludlow 4 responding. Where 
Got more action down there than we've got up here, that's for sure. Yeah. A good life. Some of us chase tennis balls. Some of us chase shadows. is that the owner of the stamp shop said these thieves are professionals because they took the cream of his collection. In 1942, Mauritania airmail, center inverted, block of four, 1942. Now check this thing on the way out, because you never know when or where they're going to show up. Lieutenant, how much could that go for? Well, again, according to the owner, if they are sold separately, $550 a piece. If they remain together as a block of four with the perforations intact, the ante goes up to $17,500. You figure one quarter of that on the street, $4,000. Some heavy postage. Which brings me to the one thing we do know about this pair. They have struck five times in this precinct. Each time it has been clean and fast and the best of the best, be it jewelry, stamps, or coins. We are dealing with experts in quality. Gentlemen, the only other thing I can tell you is that uh, they leave no clues and they follow no patterns of logic. Except one, maybe. Would you care to elaborate on that, Officer Webster? Well, this is the uh, fifth time we thought we had them and the fifth time that they let us out at that end. It's like they have an escape hatch, a contingency plan going. So that if we get too close... I have news for you, Officer Webster. People have been trying to outsmart the police ever since Eve stole the apple. Do you have any other bright ideas? No, sir. All right, that's it. Stick around, Webster. Check your pin maps. Hit the street. Dismissed. Relax, Webster. I need a driver for today. What about Mike? He's on temporary assignment with homicide. I have a speaking engagement at, uh, what do you call it, Linwood University. A speaking engagement? Is that right? Finally, I would like to say this. With all the new techniques that have been incorporated in the past few years, we are aware that there are still adjustments to be made. Like yourselves, we feel that the law comes first. Maybe we serve it from different sides of the street, but that does not mean that our quest is any less dedicated than yours. Miss Crown, you're a defense attorney for our moot court next week. Now, how do you feel about the issues Lieutenant Riker raised today? I'd like to know more about how a police officer functions in a crisis. This gut instinct you mentioned, how is it acquired? I feel with most officers, it's acquired with time. The more duress and the more tension you're under, the more it starts to build itself up, the more you depend upon it until it's as if it were part of you. I'm curious, Lieutenant, if this wonderful instinct you speak of was present two years ago at Columbus Park when 25 police officers savagely attacked a group of peaceful sit-ins, killing two of them in the ensuing battle. I'm sorry I wasn't present at that demonstration. Yet you've just told us about this remarkable instinct that all police officers acquire in the face of crisis. I didn't say all. Ah, then you admit that in a crisis, some officers are incapable of rendering intelligent judgments, perhaps some even panic and incite riots. Lieutenant, two years ago, last May, on a warm, sunny afternoon, 25 of your stormtroopers, with guns drawn, maliciously waded into a group of unarmed, harmless demonstrators, trying to save Columbus Park from being demolished. That's not true. I beg your pardon, I was there. Well, so was I. And no cop started anything. The riot was caused by a few uh, supposed radicals who thought it would be a kick to set off canisters of tear gas. What about the two persons who were killed? 
According to reports which were published in the next day's newspapers, uh, both were killed by stray bullets, neither of which could be proven to have been fired from a policeman's gun. If there are no further questions... Professor Palmer. Yes, Mr. Banning. I should like to continue questioning the patrolman. After all, how often do we get the chance to interrogate a real eyewitness? It's highly regular. But if they... Oh, Officer Webster doesn't mind. I don't mind. Well, first I'd like to know if you also believe a policeman uses a gut instinct in times of emergency. I do. Would you say this special power was working the day of the park riot? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Do you also believe this instinct we've been speaking of has been conditioned in your daily police work? Not only conditioned, it's uh, sharpened my faculties. A man of confidence. I like that. Would you mind if I put you to a little test right now? Go ahead. Then I order you to look straight at me. Don't turn your eyes. Seated on your right is the most attractive Miss Alexander. On your left, Mr. Gates. And behind you on the wall, a clock. Have you observed each of these since you've been here? I have. Excellent. Because now I would like you to tell us, using your keen faculties, if Miss Alexander is wearing perfume, what is the color of Mr. Gates' necktie, and if the clock on the wall is ticking or not. Also, just to see how observant you are, have you noticed the one discrepancy in Lieutenant Riker's uniform? Mm. Waiting officer. The most attractive Miss Alexander on my right is uh, wearing perfume. Mr. Gates on my left is not wearing a tie and his collar is open. The clock on the wall has stopped working and the hands are stuck at 10 minutes to 12. And there's no discrepancy with Lieutenant Riker's uniform. There never is. <laughs> <laughs> in my arms. Even when she stopped breathing, I just couldn't let go of her. What did it take? Five of you to drag me off? Look, I know, I know. Let's don't go into that again. Do you realize how long I've been waiting to find the cops that killed her? Just as long as I have. Yes, of course. But now we've got one of them. You heard Officer Webster. He said he was there. joking. I'm very sorry, but I had the right of way. You weren't signaling. Well, look again. My signal's still flashing. Yes, it is now, but it wasn't when I started to pass. However, if no one's heard, I'm willing to forget the whole... This is not private property. This is a city street. Sight him on a 22106 unsafe stop under the vehicle code. See your license. Of course.
you were in the wrong. He signed. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Webster. <laughs> Let me tell you, baby, a real pleasure. Comforts of home. If you like early American blandness. You want some help? No, no, no. This is my territory. I know what I want. Signal if you hear them returning. exactly are you looking for? Mentos, trivia, the little bits and pieces of Terry Webster's life that he won't miss. Like this. What is it? This police academy tie clip with his name and serial number. It's perfect. What else do you need? Something more personal. Oh, this. His private telephone book. How oh, nice. Terry Webster's a ladies' man. Good. Corey, let's not push our luck. Oh, now, this moves me. Portrait of an officer as a young man with family. <laughs> Remember, we do have another job to do tonight. All in good time, all in good time. He boasts about using his faculties while we'll make him eat those words. Oh. Another nail in his coffin. Hey, are you finished? Uh, can we go? How about this? You're crazy. Yes, I guess that is a little bit of an indulgement. Okay. It's been a pleasure, Officer Webster. I do hope to see you again soon. my buddy. See you on campus. Bye-bye. Oh, here, madam. Let me help you with those heavy oh, things. No, no, thank oh, you. Oh, but I insist. It'd be my pleasure if you'd allow me. Well, since you put it like that, yeah. I would appreciate it. <laughs> That's a very attractive dress you're wearing. Hey, Chris. Snow on the carburetor today. Sorry. 
Man, they're kill me. I'm really snowed under. Pete, how can you do this to me? Well, really, I'm sorry, man, but I can come by your place tomorrow and pick it up, look it over, and see what I can do. Okay? Okay. You better hurry. You'll be late for muster. All right, I know I'm late. Now knock it off, and let's get down to business. As you may have heard, our two fancy cat burglars have lapped up some more cream. A silent alarm was kicked off at the Dawson Antique Shop at 6.05 a.m. Our units arrived in time to give pursuit. But we lost them. But we lost them. They got away with two jade miniatures. Combined value, $4,000. I want you to write that down on your hot sheets. Two jade miniatures. Now, 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 Betty Ann, don't get angry. I'm telling the truth. Terry Webster told me all about you. Yes, he did. And how quick you turn on, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. That's why I want to come by and get it together. You know what I mean? How about tonight? I don't think she likes me. Come on, Corey, that's enough. I'm trying to study. Are you kidding? I've got about seven more numbers to do. First, Miss Connie Jo Lang. I mean it, Corey. Now forget Webster for a while. What's with this vendetta of yours? I've done some research you might find interesting. And this is what makes Officer Webster such a prize. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, Exhibit C. Webster's not just any policeman. He's the one who fired into the crowd the day Janice was killed. This could be Webster. There's no doubt about it, Ned. There's, there's no way you can be that certain. You just want to kill him. That's it, isn't it? Sure I do. For what he did to your sister. For what he did to you in class. The way he humiliated you in front of everyone. No, no, that's not it either. You, you just want to kill someone, and it doesn't really make much difference who, does it? You don't need a reason. Just to kill someone's reason enough. I figure I've got all the reason anyone but a coward could want or need. He killed Janice. I suppose you're wrong. There's that chance. Even you'll have to admit that. Hey, look, Corey, I mean, ripping off those places was one thing. But you're talking about killing someone now. You're talking about murdering a living human being. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. We've outsmarted the police. We've proved we can. This time will be no different. We'll outsmart them again and again and again. That's the way you get your kicks, isn't it? I seem to remember a smile or two on your face as well, Ned. Maybe, but... Maybe we've just graduated to bigger things, eh? If it makes you feel any better. That policeman on the photograph looks a lot like Webster, doesn't he? See you in a minute. Got another speaking engagement, Lieutenant? Don't get cute with me, not when I'm trying to do you a favor. Does this belong to you? It's my serial number. That's what made me think it might be yours. Where'd you lose it? I didn't know it was lost. It was discovered this morning in Dawson's antique shop next to an open safe. Where? You heard me the first time. Now, what was it doing there? Can you tell me that? Oh, I, I can't explain it. I couldn't this morning either when the detectives gave it to me. I thought about it so hard I was five minutes late for muster, as you well know. I want to know how it got to Dawson's next to an open safe. You think about that. Let me know what you come up with. What was that all about? You wouldn't believe me if I told you, so let's just get on out of here. Terry. Phone. Webster. Hi, Karen. 
What a nice surprise. What? When did this happen? Look, just take it easy. Um, you sure you meant me? I don't know what to say, Karen. What's the matter? How's Karen? Uh, she just received her first obscene phone call on her unlisted number. Yeah. from a guy who says he's a personal friend of mine. I guess this isn't your day. No. Let's leave before the building caves in. Corey, bring me the plastic. Not what not, as the old saying goes. Set the safe for the explosives. Hello. Please listen, Officer Webster. Look, whoever you are, you're not. Do you know what time it is? Look, um, why don't you just tell me what's going on? Oh, don't be tiresome, old boy. I think you will find this the most pleasant part. Now listen. Can you give me a logical explanation as to how it got here? I can't. Webster, you know, this is getting to be a habit with you. First your tie clip, then your phone book. These things don't just get up and walk away. Has your apartment been broken into? Is there any evidence you've been ripped off? No. Owens. Yes, sir. Come here. Now, you live in the same building with Webster. Has anything been stolen from you in the past few days? No, sir. Uh, I don't think this has anything to do with Chris and Michael James. Uh, I don't know who or why, but it's me being set up. Mm. Uh, well, I'm going to send this down to the lab. Maybe he left some prints on it, whoever it is. Dust it for prints. Meanwhile, why don't you do an inventory of your apartment, see if anything else is missing? 
Maybe with a little luck, next time we will have their number instead of the other way around. $3,200 for the stamps, $2,000 for the jade pieces, and almost $5,000 for the uncut stones. The fence have anything to say? Yeah, keep it coming. Also, we got a little curious. He asked what two nice, well-educated young men like us did when we weren't blowing safes. What'd you tell him? I said we ran a cement shoe factory for creeps who asked too many questions. <laughs> anyway, he's got another stamp shop set up. Yes, well, enough about him. Now, what did you find out about Webster's duty schedule? <laughs> Got it all right here in the jacket. Here you go. Webster's duty roster for the week and as much background material as I could find. This is good. Hey, Corey, don't you think it's about time to let me in on the next move? I'm glad to see you starting to enjoy yourself. It is kind of catchy, isn't it? Seeing someone alive one moment, dead the next. From now on, no more sparring or love taps. We smash Webster with body blows till he's reeling and retching on his knees. Then one, two, three, out. Then let's really do it. Let's drive out and visit his family. Oh, very good, but too far away. No, it's got to be right here, close to home, so we can be around to see his grief and sorrow when he gets the news. But he's got no family here. True. But he's got something closer. Christopher Owens, his piglet partner. And to a policeman. That's family. I spoke to 34 out of 35 tenants. Nobody saw anything suspicious. Well, don't give up. You still got number 35 to go. <laughs> Who is it, anyway? Mrs. Callender. Well, I have an idea our friend wasn't exactly doing cartwheels to get attention. Hmm. Do you figure out what else he took? Well, as far as I can tell, besides the tie clasp and the phone book, uh, I'm missing a little picture of me, my mom, and my sister, and a bottle of shaving lotion I got last Christmas. Anything else? Mm -hmm. One consolation, anyway. Yeah, what's that? I hated that shaving lotion. I hated it. <laughs> How long has it been? It's been over an hour. You sure Owen's couldn't have gone out without us seeing him? You tell me. You've been telling him all day. No, that's the only way out. Hey, we don't even know if this car we ripped off can even keep up with his motorcycle. What are you nervous about? Who's nervous? I'm cool. You are. This one's no different from the others. Except we never hit anyone in broad daylight. How would you like to waste him? Owens? Yes. Be like a preview before opening night. <sighs> no, I'm not so sure I can handle it. I suggest you make up your mind. It's now or never. Slide over, I'll take him.
justifying itself, then do it for Janice. Think of her, and then think of those photographs of Webster. Make sure we got him. Zone's dead? Of course. Of course he is. It's Pete Miller from the motor pool. Just left the bike at the motor pool. He'd still be alive. Don't do it. It's not your fault. It was an accident. Oh, man, no accident. Pete was murdered just like the guard two nights ago. That's crazy. Pete was doing me a favor. It had nothing to do with you. Yeah, but he just happened to be riding your bike. Oh, man. He was killed because someone thought he was me? But that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. No two men are killed maybe because of me, and I don't know why. You better come at me. What's he waiting for? Maybe to have you do just what you've done that could have had prints on it. Look, uh, go on. I can finish up here. I'll see you guys later. Just take it easy, huh? Take it slow. This is Ludlow Niner requesting a code seven. Ludlow Niner, Roger. Mrs. O'Neill said you were looking for me to ask questions. Did I do something wrong? No, Mrs. Callender. But I did want to ask you if you had noticed anything suspicious near Terry's apartment in the last week or so. Like somebody trying to break in. <laughs> That's silly. What? A burglar picking the apartment of a policeman to rob <laughs> when he's got so many others to choose from. I guess it is silly. Here, why don't I help you with this and walk you upstairs? Oh, okay. thank you. Thank you. On the other hand, I do remember those two nice friends who came to dinner last week. But then I'm always impressed with good manners. <laughs> Mrs. Callender, what two friends? Oh, you know, those two chums of Mr. Webster's. I met them in the hall when they were saying good night and thanking him for a fine dinner. Are you sure it was last week? Positive. Is that all? Mrs. Callender, could you tell me anything? Everything about Terry's two polite friends. I made such a strong impression. Age, 
Oh, yeah. Hi. I remember them very well. Terry, Mrs. Callender saw them. She spotted two of them leaving your apartment last Tuesday night. Young men, early 20s, well-dressed, both about 5'10", dark hair. Mean anything? It could be almost anyone. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, just before closing your door, she thinks they yelled out, see you guys on campus. See you guys on campus? See you guys on campus? It's crazy. But it fits. Linwood University. Riker's speaking engagement to that law class. My faculties. My faculties. What are you talking about? Let's check something out with Riker. I'll fill you in on the way. Yeah. My condolences, Officer Webster. How very sad for him. And for you, too. You must be feeling very lonely. Now, you listen, creep. That's a lousy sense of humor. My partner's dead. Now, don't you understand that? Oh, I do understand your grief. I was right there on the firing line. You might even say I was the last face Chris saw. He died very bravely. I want to meet you. A confrontation? Oh, yes. I'd like that. Where? I hear your super cop. You figure it out. Use your faculties, sir. <laughs> if you don't mind laboring on Sunday, I'll be waiting for you, Terry. Now, y'all come and get me. If you're smart enough. Goodbye. I want to do this alone. Over my dead body. <laughs> Central, this is level 9. Webster, put me through to Lieutenant Riker. What is it, Webster? Lieutenant working on a hunch on the uh, cat burglar killers. It's not much, but it may pay off. Where are you headed now? Campus of Linwood University. All right, play it out. If it turns into anything, we let you know. All right, do that, Webster. Do that. 10 4. I never. Talk to Why me? I want to know why me? Because 
You killed Janice West. You murdered her in cold blood. What? Don't play dumb with me. You admitted to being at Columbus Park that day. Now admit you killed Janice. Admit it! You're a fool. Yes, I was there, but that was over two years ago before I even dreamed of joining the force. I was there because a friend of mine was leading the demonstration and I was marching with him. Janice Weston and I were on the same side. Freedom is right. Go of it, Terry. You can't let it climb all over you like that. It's over. <sighs> what a waste. You know, if it weren't for Janice Weston, all this might not have happened. That's not good. Janice Weston was just a name used. There could have been a thousand other reasons that turned him to killing. had it all, right? Everything. Started the game out with blue chips. Funny money. You gotta laugh at funny money. You gotta laugh at, uh... having it all. I guess there's just gotta be uh, more to life, huh? Up there in the penthouse down here, you uh, gotta find your reasons for living. Just about finished with the reports, Lieutenant. Well, that's not the reason I came in here, Rowan. There's a fresh pot of coffee in my office. Well, it's not my birthday. You don't have to bring any presents, you know. <laughs> a man gets to the point where he needs some company, a face to look at and make him feel good. I'm not asking the two of you for a date, you understand? There's coffee on if you're interested. <laughs> Well, I guess I could go for a face that makes me feel good.